back on over to Talk of the Town on this Wednesday. Here's your host, Steve Noxon. Well, that sounds real familiar. Hi, I'm St- I'm your host, Steve Noxon of Talk of the Town. And right now, we're going to go to the phones and welcome Eric Senich to WATR, although this is not his first time on the airwaves here at WATR. How are you, Eric? Hey, Steve. How you doing? Boy, yeah, that's good. I, I think I was on ATR for, for maybe a week. I filled in for, for my dad way back when. <laughs> how you doing? Well, that's how we all start, man. I, you know, we all we all get our start somewhere, and ATR has sent a lot of people out into the world uh, and given them a great start. So um, I'm very proud to be a part of this team here as well, and also sitting in this chair that your dad was oh, a yeah. host of. Absolutely. You know, that, that's what's a, it's a thrill to be on the, the same airwaves that my dad was on for many years, and he loved working at ETR. Um, and I, I used to hang out with him just as a little kid in the studio, watching him do his thing. So he, he got me hooked on the radio bug. And you know who got my dad hooked was Bob Crane. There you go. And that's who we're going to yep. be talking about here today. Uh, Eric is the host of a podcast called The Bob Crane Show Reloaded. He also is a uh, big promoter of the Vote for Bob Crane cause, which is to get Bob Crane uh, into the uh, National Radio Hall of Fame. And yeah. he's also, a co- like as you said, he was uh, Jim Senek's cousin, which I guess makes him your second cousin. Yeah, that would be it. That would be it. And that would be it. One of the things about Bob Crane, I think everybody knows uh, him from the Hogan's Hero show. That was probably the biggest thing that everybody remembers about him. But there's so much more to his career than just that. And and you've got it documented very well. And it's really amazing to think about some of the things that this guy was doing back in the early days of, of radio that no one else had even thought of doing. Yeah, a huge influence on, on Connecticut radio uh, back in the 50s when he was particularly at WICC. That's where he really, you know, picked up some serious steam and then eventually went out onto the West Coast. But uh, you're right. I mean, most people know him as Colonel Hogan, um, and he brought smiles to millions every week with that. But, you know, long before that, and for me, being a radio guy, as you are, um, you know, I, 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 I think I'm even more fascinated with his radio talents, you know, just especially getting a chance to hear a lot of his old tapes and things that he did stuff that's on YouTube, but it's really, the podcast, I, you know, I give credit to Carol Ford, and she wrote a, an amazing book, along with uh, uh, Linda Groundwater, uh, and, and, uh, and, and Dee uh, as well, they, they all worked on this, this book, and uh, it's, the, um, it, it's really the, the, the definitive, you know, look at Bob's life from beginning to end. And, you know, that the podcast, we call it Reloaded because we are essentially starting from the beginning, you know, rather than starting from when he went to the West Coast or starting from when he went to Holding Heroes. We're going to start all the way at the beginning so people get a chance to, to know, Bob, the whole story. And the fascinating thing to a lot of people, I think, is when you mention Bob Crane, unfortunately there is that the, 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 end, of the his, end of his life, really kind of over overshadows everything else that he's done uh yep. you know people think of hogan heroes and then people think of that and that's really it but maybe you can give us some ideas of some of the things that he innovated in radio yes absolutely before i do i want i, I apologize to, to my friend d young I, I i was drawing a blank on that d young linda groundwater and carol ford on, on that amazing book by the way which is bob crane the definitive biography but um yes r- radio uh, well, that's why the podcast, we wanted to do it, is because we wanted to tell the complete story. Um, and this is something that my dad would do. If he were up to doing it, he would do it, and he'd hit, he'd hit it out of the park with it. And so I basically stepped in, and, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I'm honored to be, you know, the voice of the podcast to tell his whole story, but the radio end of things, particularly for us being in Connecticut, what he did was, was groundbreaking and so influential. Um, that by the time he had gone to Hogan Heroes, he really mastered radio, and uh, he knew the ins and outs of the business. And boy, I wish he could have continued with it just selfishly because I'm a radio guy. But certainly can't blame him from going on to uh, to bigger and better things in Hollywood. 
Well, we were listening to some of the clips that you have on your YouTube channel uh, about uh, Bob reminiscing about some of the people he interviewed, even some of the interviews yeah. that he played. He had Jerry Lewis. He had I mean, all of these incredible actors and comedians, Jonathan Winters, Phyllis Diller. And he really held his own with them. He did. That's, you know, uh, in fact, we're trying to do one on our, 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 an upcoming episode, maybe the next one, Rod Serling, you know, Twilight Zone fame. Uh, and he did hold his own. I mean, he, he, those guests, they loved being on his show. Uh, Jerry Lewis was a guy who became good friends with Bob, you know, just from doing interviews with him. Um, you know, Bob was, was not only, uh, you know, talented, uh, he was smart, intelligent. He asked really good questions, and and he got a lot out of his guests. And, you know, that was like the go-to place, uh, you know, especially for actors to promote, uh, you know, a movie or a television show or musicians to promote an album. Uh, they loved going there, and he made them feel right at home. One of the things that I enjoyed reading about him was the amount of research, the amount of prep work that he did when he was pre uh, preparing for a show, and uh, you being in radio as long as you have, I certainly understand the amount of work that goes into just doing, you know, uh, just this one interview, uh, much less okay. a regular show every single day for three hours. I mean, it's hours and hours and hours of prep work. Uh, yep. But when Bob got on the air, he just kind of went with it. He just went wherever it was going to go. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, he was he he was a hard worker. In fact, you know, a lot of the the people that worked with the mechanics, you know, they said he would be most most often in his office working on his next show, or he would even be at home working on his next show. But um, he, but at uh, at the same time, you know, like my dad will 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 talk about. You know, Bob would would show up like literally minutes before he was ready to go on the air, and his hair flying all over the place, hmm. and he would just turn the mic on and boom I mean he had all those sound effects that he used which were again ahead of his time uh, it, uh, he would have those prepared ahead of time as much as he could but it wasn't like they were alphabetized or anything like that he just knew where everything was and he would pull the album out cue up the cut boom it was amazing so he had that combination of hard work and he just had I guess you could say he had that natural ability although you know he when he first started he didn't have, he didn't, you know, he he got turned out for some gigs, and he, you know, he, he had to work hard to develop his skills, but there was something innate there, and we, I would like to know if there was anybody else in his family, my dad doesn't know if anybody, you know, certainly not his mom and dad had any uh, experience in the entertainment business, but I'd love to know if there was somewhere along the bloodline that there was, if not, he, he certainly started it. Now, it's interesting that both Bob and your dad, Jim Senek, uh, went into radio. There was an audio letter that uh, my producer found where it was like about a 20, 22-minute uh, recording that Bob had sent to your dad, Jim, talking about and, and, and kind of, I guess, lifting his spirit, spirits and, and saying, you know, if this is something you're going to do, you know, this is what you want to do and giving him all this advice. I've got about a minute of that audio, if you wouldn't mind uh, letting me play that. Oh, of course not. Go ahead. Okay. This is uh, Bob Crane with an audio letter to Jim Senek, the former host of Talk of the Town. Now, I happen to be uh, fortunate. That, like I said, in my career, the timing was right. I happened to be in the right place at the right time. So that each step came gradually. It was a year up in the sticks in Hornell. And then it was uh, a few months up in Bristol. Then I happened to end up in Bridgeport after I'd been in the business about a year and a half. And I was on a small station. See, there was a third station in Bridgeport at the time, WLIZ. And it was the nothing station in town. And I happened to be fortunate there because with three stations in town, the other two stations, NAB and ICC, were the big kingpins. And they were trying all different things to be successful. So thus, when I arrived, they had just fired everybody. And I got a lot of experience right off because they allowed me to do things that they wouldn't have allowed me if there had been, uh, if it had been a big station, in other words. After I'd been there a year, they bought out. WICC, and and I suddenly found myself the morning man on uh, one of the biggest stations in Connecticut after I'd only been in the business two or three years. <laughs> I, That's great. It's so interesting. It's so interesting to me because I have wanted to be in radio since I was 16 years old, and yeah. this is this job that I'm doing right now is literally my first paying job in radio, and I'm 56 years old. <laughs> Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Hey, you never know, man. When uh, you know a, a dream can come your way, it's uh, it, it, that's very cool. That's great to hear. And 
his stories about you know traveling around and going to these different towns. I mean, one of the things that uh, one of my favorite shows, obviously, is WKRP, and you even referenced that in your bio. Uh, I picked up that yep. right away. Um, oh, you picked up on the opening line uh-huh. down the top, down the dial. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and, and you followed in uh, your dad's footsteps. Uh, you had a long career in radio, or, and, and you're still working with the podcast, so you're still moving forward with the new technology. Uh, yeah, so, I'm, still, I'm in FM radio as well. I still uh, work over in uh, in Danbury, and uh, still a classic rock DJ. So, yeah, I do the, the podcasting and the FM radio thing. I love it. It's in my blood. Yeah, and truly, it's just it's one of these things where every day I get up and I come to work, and it's really as much work as it is. It's also something that, like you say, just absolutely love doing this stuff. And yeah. it's because of people like Bob Crane who kind of broke down a lot of these uh, barriers and broke down a lot of the the kind of stayed old. And here's our next song, DJ kind of guys. You know, he was right. he really opened up the door for a lot of different types of personalities in this industry. Yeah, one of the things that I learned. Uh, from from my dad that my dad learned from Bob was make every make every on air break matter. An on air break, you know, is, is is like the inside lingo. It's, it's every time you're scheduled to turn on that microphone and talk, make it matter. You know, um, and especially now more than ever with all the different options that are out there, people have. Uh, if somebody's tuning into the station to listen to you, um, you know, then you want to do everything you possibly can to make it worth their while, um, and and that's what. What I take with me through my dad, and my dad, you know, he just said just recently, we talk radio all the time, and he said, you know, I loved every single minute of it, and I, and, and I have as well, and, uh, and I know Bob did. I mean, Bob loved acting, but I think radio was, was his heart and soul. I, I also want to mention, you know, the, the, the YouTube, you know, video that you just played, that clip of his audio letter to my dad. Um, my dad gave that to me, and, I, just in time, because this was about 15 years ago, and he, he said, I, I have a favor to ask. I said, yeah, what, what do you need, Dad? He said, I have a reel-to-reel. I have some reel-to-reel tapes. You know, some of them are from Bob Crane, and, and I would love to have you put them on MP3. I said, absolutely. He gives it to me. The, the, the box is almost falling apart. The reel-to-reel tape is orange and brittle. It's breaking off. I had to, I had to ever so carefully feed it onto the reel-to-reel mm-hmm. machine, and I, bar- I just barely got it on, and I played it once through, and then when I saw those sound waves on the computer, I'm like, it's in. And once it was in, I, that was it. I backed it up on CD, I cassette, I mean, you name it. You know, I, if I could have backed it up on 8-track, I would have. Uh, but, but uh, yeah, so I'm so glad that I had. And that, that, I can listen to that any time. I think we're up to like a 1,000 hits on that now, which is so cool. And, you know, a lot of Bob's fans have reached out to me just from that video alone. And it's it's speaks to what we, Carol and I, want to do with the podcast. There's more to Bob than Hogan's Heroes. There's more to him than the headlines that, that preceded, you know, his death. Um, he was a very kind person. He he, um, he thought highly of his family and his friends, and he loved my dad. He, he, he really, uh, he really um, cared about my dad and where he was headed. Um, at the end of that tape, you can hear him congratulating him on his upcoming wedding to my mom, so... Um, that's probably my favorite piece that I got from my dad of all the tapes that he gave me of Bob. Yeah, it's just one of these things. Uh, it's it's got to be heartwarming, and it's it's a, a obviously you, you cherish that piece of tape because it, it it means a lot to your whole family with with the, with the cousins and everything else. But uh, you're oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I as you say, getting it off that reel to reel. I was just kind of laughing because I have the same thing with some old uh, movies that my dad had taken of us when we were kids that we had transferred yep. over to DVD. And, boy, it, if I had not done that when I did, it was never going to happen, and those were going to be lost. That's it. It's that make-or-break moment. And um, my dad gave me the album, Bob's, uh, it was called a comedy album. It was a promotional album for his KNX show. I think it was the eighth anniversary show. And that was the first time I heard Bob uh, doing any radio uh, stuff and that has, I believe, the Jonathan Winters clip in there and stuff like that. But you know, vinyl you could at least preserve that a little better than reel to reel, which is, ooh, man, that. And there's a photo that we finally found. My my brother Marty uh, dug up a photo of, of Bob in 1966. If you go to vote for Bob Crane dot org, that's vote the number four Bob Crane dot org. I believe it's on there. And um, w- there's a picture of my of Bob. He was in town in February of '66, so he was just getting hot. He was on Hogan Cheerios, just starting, 
and he was in Connecticut from February of 66, and uh, he stopped by my parents' apartment, and my older brother and sister were just little babies, and he came in with his first wife, Anne, and my mom still remembers she had a, uh, she had a, uh, a fever. She had a um, burning up, sick, sick as a dog, and uh, she said, but I, I got dressed, and got ready and Bob came over and he took a picture so if you look it should be on there it's a shot of Bob his wife Anne uh, my mom and dad and then my brother and sister Diana and Marty and that's again one of those things where we were looking for it and if you can find it it's gold and we got it now we're talking with Eric Senich he's the uh, one of the hosts of the podcast the I'm sorry, the Bob Crane Show Reloaded, and you also have a campaign to get Bob Crane, uh, son of Waterbury, inducted into the National Radio Hall of Fame. Talk a little bit about the campaign. What is What What do you need from people to get this done? Well, that, you know what? The best thing is to reach uh, Carol through the website at voteforbobcrane.org uh, and, and um, submit. Uh, whatever you feel you want to submit, if you if you were lucky enough to be around when you were listening to Bob when he was doing mornings on ICC, uh, you know, just or if you just feel like, you know, he deserves the recognition based on just on what you now know from the podcast or the YouTube videos or the book, um, and and just send and just just send it all to Carol and she'll put everything together and send it to the to to the people who are in charge of 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 you know, nominating Bob. I mean, he, it's it's a no brainer that he that he should be in there. But we all know why. Um, you know, it's it's for some reason he was he is held to this higher standard than than others for some reason, and um, because of the way you know the the, the controversy of the way his life ended, it, it somehow uh, makes makes him unworthy, I suppose, in their eyes. I don't get it. But then again, I know who you know who he was as a person through my dad. But as a talent, um, I mean, my goodness, you know, he he was so influential. The sound bites, playing sound bites, and also he would enhance commercials, as he would call it. And he <laughs> would just take a simple, you know, simple live commercial read instead of just you know whole humming it through and just saying whatever. He would uh, he turn it into a bit, and he would use sound effects and he would use humor and. Um, all of those things, you know, were he was taking a huge risk with those. I mean, sometimes he would do a spot. He did a spot on a, a local deli nearby in Bridgeport where he was saying the sandwiches were made with uh, with granite and rocks, and and he was joking, obviously. <laughs> but the the owner of the deli called in. He said, "You got to fire this guy. This is this is unbelievable. He's 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 gonna he's gonna put us out of business. I'm paying you for a spot, and he's making light of it." Well. Within a couple hours, there was a line for me out the door at the guy's deli. And he calls back. He says, scratch that. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> He's doing great. But, you know, those are things. When you take risks like that and you're the first one to do it, you know, it, it, he um, he was fortunate in that in the smaller stations he worked at, he was able to go straight up to uh, program director, which is, you know, not easy. And he did it in, like, no time. But I think, you know, he, he obviously proved to the, to the GM, the general manager, that he was – you know he had to he had the stuff to lead, but you know he was he was the program director of these small stations, so therefore he could call the shots on what he did on the air. So he didn't have somebody standing over him saying, "No, don't say that, don't don't do this, don't laugh, you're laughing too much," or whatever it was. He could do that, and that helped him a lot. But still risky the things that he did, um, and then you know over time they start to influence other jobs. You know I know I. When I first started, I would listen to all the disc jockeys that I thought were great, and I'd try to emulate them first before getting my own style and develop, developing my own personality. And so, you, so sure, I mean, you listen to some of the big, the big names. You know, Howard Stern is the biggest of them all, and Fred Norris is the guy who's known for the sound bites and sound, you know, the drops, the movie clips, and things like that. That's what Bob was doing a long time ago. Yeah, and that's what I found really fascinating about it is the, the the number of things that he was doing that no one else had done before, but right. other people became far more famous, Wolfman Jack, so many other people in the industry, for kind of doing what he did and, and getting away with it. Like you said, the courage to do that, too, because it, he could have very easily just been fired for, for stepping over that line if someone didn't give well, him the opportunity. Yeah, Steve, you know, 
um, when you have, I mean, you're talking about a guy who had just gotten married. He's got little kids. He's got to, he's got to put food on the table, and he's he's risking getting fired for something that he believed mm -hmm. was entertaining. He believed that the people would enjoy it. Uh, a great example is go to uh, if you go to our I think it was our most recent podcast episode where there's this great clip of him in character uh, and he's I guess you know a Lothario type character and he's, 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 he's it sounds like he's flirting with this woman and it's his mother it's his mother laughing <laughs> and he loved his mother his mother Rose had the greatest laugh ever my dad would say and he recorded her laugh and he knew that the people listening would love it as much as he did and, and he had that genius about him he knew what was going to work he believed it he believed it so much that he was going to risk possibly losing his job over it and he did it and then it paid off of course down the line it all looks like hey you know anybody can do that not really not when you have you know I know when I I, I didn't have a wife and kids you know and I I would even still feel the pressure of do I really want to try this I want to get fired <laughs> you know yeah oh no yeah and, and he did it <laughs> he did it yeah, and he did, he, he, he did it at a time where, uh, you know, there were a thousand people lined up to replace him. Um, when people like that in those positions were considered just, you know, cogs in a wheel, they were very replaceable. So he, he carved yeah. out his own unique path and was very successful at it. So, oh, yeah. Eric, I yeah, want to thank you. Yeah, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Steve. I was going to say, I want to thank you very, very much for your time today. How can people, again, uh, help with this endeavor? And what's the name of the website? Yes, go to uh, vote. Four, that's the number four, bobcranes.org. That's the website you can go to to listen to the podcast, to contact Carol Ford about what you can do to get Bob into the uh, National Radio Hall of Fame. Um, we're, our podcast is is on uh, several different formats, Spreaker, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio. Um, you really can't miss it. We're up on YouTube as well. Um, and I think that's it. And, and buy the book. Bob Crane, the definitive biography, because not only is it a great book about Bob, but my dad, Jim Senich, is in it. So he's quoted throughout it. There you go. And, um, yeah, so it, it, and there's some great stories in there, and um, I think that's it. Steve, I appreciate it, man. It's, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be on, on your show. Eric, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your time as well. What, what time is your show on on Saturdays on I-95? Uh, yeah, free plug. This is good. Uh, <laughs> I-95, I-95, 95.1 FM, uh, every Saturday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., and, uh, you can also get our app. We have an app, and, uh, um, you can search I-95 Rock in your, uh, in your app stores or, you know, uh, online. And then, uh, and also I-95Rock.com. I write weekly blogs there, and so I, 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 I've been there for a long time, and I love it. It's a great station. Um, much like with my dad at ATR, it's, it's, it's like my second home. Well, I know that when we, uh, we were talking here at the station about having you on, it brought back memories of your father and everyone oh. here. Uh, just we, It brought back a lot of memories about and the history of uh, not only the station itself, but this show, Talk of the Town. And I, I mention it all the time. I feel like I'm sitting on the, on the shoulders of giants. And yeah. uh, your dad, Jim, being one of them who uh, cr really helped build this legacy that I have been entrusted with. And it's truly an honor. And uh, I really have enjoyed speaking with you. And please give uh, give your dad, Jim, all the best from everyone here at WATR, okay? Oh, I, I certainly will. I will be visiting him on Saturday. And he, um, he, he, uh, he still, to this day, speaks highly of his time at ATR. And I really appreciate that. Thank you, Steve. Eric Sinich, I want to thank you again very much for your time today. And uh, best of luck with this campaign. Thank you, Steve. Great job on the interview. Uh, anytime you, you, uh, you need another interview from me, you just give me a call. Sounds good. We will put you on the rotation, my friend. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thank you. Take care. Have a great day. All right. Take care. That's uh, Eric Senich, the son of uh, Jim Senich, and also a, uh, a radio man in his own right. He is the uh, voice of the podcast, The Bob Crane Show Reloaded, and is also uh, working uh, the campaign to get Bob Crane inducted into the National Radio Hall of Fame Kim, uh, so the, the website there is vote for Bob vote the number four Bob so if you feel that that is something that Mr. Crane should be recognized for his talents certainly 
Any efforts in that regard would be greatly appreciated, certainly by Mr. Senich.